In the northwest corner of the Mojave Desert lies one of the driest, hottest, and most formidable landscapes known to man. This 5,262 square mile national park is home to a diverse collection of geological and ecological oddities unlike anything you've ever seen, including salt lakes, traveling rocks, craters, a golf course fit only for the devil himself, slithering reptiles, hidden saline hot springs, gold mines, millions of wildflowers, wild burrows, massive sand dunes, and our favorite, miles and miles of unpaved, unmaintained trails. On March 31st of 2017, we set out to meet up with the Turtleback community for another Herd of Turtles event, the first annual Traverse of Death Valley. Can I go after you? Yeah. This is the road that we were on on the Enchanted Rockies Trail. Yeah. yeah. You remember that? But you know what got in there? What? Ice. Yeah, there's some ice and snow up there now. But you have to turn down where you go in snow. That's right. Along the way, we ran across an old friend and had to stop to say hi to the Enchanted Rockies Trail, which you may know as a series of trails we linked and traveled in 2016 during a 10-day exploration of New Mexico and Colorado. There you go. After several hours of travel, we made camp in the Magdalena District of Cibola National Forest, and after a peaceful night's rest, we were eager to make Death Valley before nightfall. Along the way, we had a totally random meetup with Dave Munsterman, the owner and founder of Turtleback Trailers, at a gas station just outside of King. We pointed a small convoy west into the teeth of an ever intensifying headwind. So here we are on our way to Death Valley for the Turtleback herd event. And uh, it's a little bit windy. <laughs> so we're scrambling around trying to figure out what our options are at this point because 60, 70, 80 mile an hour winds and uh, rooftop tents don't really go together um, if you want to sleep. So uh, we may just end up sleeping in the forerunner itself or dig a very deep hole and just cover ourselves up because that's the only place you're going to get any peace tonight. So let's investigate what our options are and see where we end up. Where you want to end up? Uh, Best Western sounds great. <laughs> Best Western. Yeah. <laughs> Where you want to go? My way party. Of course. <laughs> With all the hotels booked solid, we had no other choice but to brave the storm and do our best not to get blown away. With our 23-0 Sydney tent deployed, we settled in for what we knew would be a wild ride for the night. Morning. Mm. Did you sleep good? Was it windy? Yeah. 
You didn't hear a thing, did you? Mm -mm. You slept so good. How about you, Mama? How'd you sleep? <laughs> Better than the, the last windstorm in Death Valley. But not much. I don't think so. <laughs> so day one, Death Valley. Or night one, I should say. We saw about 80 mile an hour gusts with sustained winds right around 45 miles an hour. The uh, <clears throat> 23 zero tent did awesome, um, but not so awesome that we wanted to risk the gusts that we're picking up this morning because they kept getting worse and worse about 4.30. And so we uh, made an executive decision to fold it down, crawl into the into the forerunner for just a little bit until the, until the sun got up. So not much sleep last night. We're hoping that the wind calms down as we well, going about this trip. Good. Yeah. <laughs> well, somebody slept good. You slept pretty good, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess we're going to finish packing up and rolling into town to meet all the other turtleback owners. Let's go find the herd. After meeting up with the herd, we opted to check out the more touristy attractions before moving further away into the more remote areas of the National Park. Next up was the Devil's Golf Course, an ancient lake bed with jagged sculptures carved into works of art by wind, rain, and time. We then took a shortcut through the colorful 20 Mule Team Canyon. This route was used by the Borax Mining Companies to haul the minerals from the valley using huge wagons towed by 20 mules apiece. Herd of turtles then turned onto Echo Canyon Trail and made our way to Enyo Mine, a now deserted mining community that began when two men by the name of Maroney Hicks and Chet Leavitt discovered gold in the area. It wasn't long before dozens of claims had been staked, and a small community sprung up, complete with its own blacksmith shop, boarding house, and a store. Work at the mine was performed primarily during the winter due to the extreme temperatures. Ultimately, the mine was shut down due to poor quality ore and the difficulty in transporting water from eight miles away for processing. As you stroll through the remains, you can't help but admire the tenacity of its inhabitants to work in such conditions to pursue their dreams of the precious metal and the riches it grants to its miners.
With the sun setting, we made our way back down Echo Canyon Trail, and after topping off our fuel, made from a Mesquite Spring Campground for the night and some much needed peaceful rest. What you got? Wine. Wine. <laughs> Why you need that? Because I didn't get any sleep last night. None? Well, I probably like snoozed, but uh -huh. that's not legit sleeping. Yeah. You did snooze because I was awake all night. <laughs> and you heard me snoozing? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Why didn't we sleep last night? Because the wind was stupid. It was stupid? Yeah, it was like 70 or 80 miles per hour. Yeah. Gusts and the tent was flapping. And uh -huh. So what's for supper? Steak and grilled zucchini. Heck yeah. Let's do and it. And wine. <laughs> and wine. 